Hello, John here again with a uh, another video, but this is a video that's starting off a new series of videos, and all, and this series of videos is about doing this. We're going to take one of those, which has nothing in it and we're going to put one of those in it and what this will allow us is we're going to basically I'm calling it the Commodore's the Commodore 64 Pi project we're going to put a Raspberry Pi in a Commodore 64 box to make it react like a Commodore 64 and also there's uh, put um, a retro gaming station on it as well so the 64 be able to play games on it as well as SNES games and other games so what I've been doing over the winter is I've been actually buying all the stuff that's required to do this so I've got the Raspberry Pi I've got my case um, I'm not using that keyboard because My mate Mark, who are Mark Commodore Sales, has given me a keyboard to use with it. So let me just unwrap it a little bit. Whoa. Didn't think it would be this difficult to take off. There we go. So we're going to put that keyboard inside that box inside a Raspberry Pi and the box is going to be spray painted by a friend of mine and it's going to be a raspberry colour to match the Raspberry Pi so it's going to be a unique Commodore 64 bread bin with a white keyboard but with a raspberry colour on the outside so it's going to look pretty cool i've even got all the I've even got all the labels on i'll show you that in a minute so let me just wrap that back up there we go so 64 and the rise but the problem is to actually do it you need a whole rack of other stuff so the first thing you need is a keyboard, com keyboard, a Commodore keyboard to USB converter, which is this, which is the in, in, in individual computers uh, keyboard converter. And what it does is it takes, it fits inside the breadboard there okay and you put the keyboard on that set of pins there because that Commodore 64 Vic but the problem is it needs to be powered from here so I can just find them I've had to buy loads and loads of stuff here we go so I've bought a set of headers to put in there so I can then connect a USB cable, a header cable. Right, let me find that. Somewhere around here. Oh, I've bought so much stuff, I tell you. Where's the header cable? Oh well, can't find it off end. Can't find it straight away anyway. Trust me. Anyway, when I do find it, I'll show you. So I'm going to take it all apart anyway. Right, so I need one of these, and that is to convert 
the Commodore 64 keyboard into a USB keyboard that then can interface with the Raspberry Pi. So, put that back in there. Uh, always catches me out this does. There we go. Put it that way in. So that's that. And the headers to go with it, so I'll put them together. Because I'm going to be doing some soldering. <laughs> and I'll be showing you. Uh, we also need some way of displaying the the um, Raspberry Pi through in, through the case. So what I've bought is a, a HDMI extender. It's only a small one because it's going to come from the Raspberry Pi and just poke itself out through the case. So I needed one of those. I've also needed... Um, where is it? A proper HDMI cable so I can plug it into the telly um, here we go this is a micro USB extender and this is going to be purely for the power supply so the power supply will plug into there because that will be attached to the the case and this end will plug into the Raspberry Pi to power the Raspberry Pi then I've got a mini four port USB hub and this hub is going to be sticking out of the user port of the Commodore 64 so we can extend the Raspberry Pi and the, the, and the reason for doing that is to um, plug in one or more of these. There we go. A Xbox 360 X uh, USB controller. So they will be plugging into the 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 hub round the back. We've also have also purchased some. Them. There we go, number two, where's number three? There it is. Some phono connectors, so I'm going to be drilling three holes to put the phono connectors for a different way of connecting the video to the Raspberry Pi, because the Raspberry Pi has composite as well as HDMI, so they'll be going in there. I've also got a go, mini cable to connect the Raspberry Pi through its three port jack to the three phono sockets that will connect to the outside wheel. So that's going to go inside there. I've also got a small network extender. So that bit will be connected to the case and that bit will be connected to the Raspberry Pi. So it's going to be a mass of cables inside there and I've got to sort that out. I've also got some motherboard mounts and these motherboard mounts are going to help, are going to secure the Raspberry Pi uh, printed board to the case. But I'm not going to screw to the case, I'm going to actually glue uh, a piece of wood to the case and then screw these into the piece of wood so it's lifted it off and it also gives it some airflow underneath yeah um, I have got here we go it's a micro SD extension so this the, so that bit there in the middle is going to be uh, point attached to the case and that bit there is going to be plugged directly into the Raspberry Pi and it means then I'll be able to change the SD cards of the Raspberry Pi without having to open the uh, 64 up so that's that 
Then I bought a few, few, few SD cards. In fact, I bought quite a few, and the, the reason I bought so many was these fellas were only going for 10 quid in Asda. <laughs> so, you know, there were 64 ones, they were, I think they were tenner, the 16s were 5 quid, and the 32s, so there's their 64s, there's 64s, 32s were I think 8 quid, and the 16s were 5, all from Asda, so I bought a job lot of them. And the Raspberry Pi will take up to 64 gigabyte. I mean, it will take bigger ones, but they are a bit temperamental. Then I've got hot glue gun with sticks, so I can glue the bits together. So when I make the holes for the outsides, I'm going to glue them on. Got plenty of sticks, plenty of hot glue sticks, so if I make a mess, there we go, loads of them. And, uh, where are we? The important things. Bought a load of DVD CDs. So, there's Nintendo. Every game that Nintendo made for the SNES, NES, 64, were all on there, and that's going to be put on there. Nindo, Nintendo, Nintendo NES games, Sega games, so Mega Drive and um, Game Gear, ZX Spectrum games, Atari 800 games and Commodore 64 games and Amiga games and what's gonna and those games are gonna be put on for the retro pie side of it so the it's got that's what I mean it's going to be a a, a retro gaming system and then to finish it off, I've got some labels. So I've got some Raspberry Pi labels, as you can see, a Raspberry Pi, which will go on there. And then I've also got, so if I get, bring that out, as you can see, I've got some Commodore long gold labels and I've got the Commodore power label. And they will go on to there. So this Commodore is gonna be raspberry color with gold labels, silver Raspberry Pi, because I want to show that there's a Raspberry Pi in there. And that is, is it. Yep, that is definitely it. There's nothing else on there. And, oh, and I've got a joystick as well. I've got a joystick and this is going to be my little project for the summer and so it's taken me all winter to acquire all this stuff and I'll, I'll cost it up and uh, let you guys know how much it's cost me but I've got a it's, it's not it's, it's it's not a bad case it's not a bad case it's a bit beaten up but it's gonna get painted anyway so it'll look brand new so it's going to get painted with raspberry, uh, a, a sort of raspberry, uh, dark raspberry colour. It's going to get lacquered, so it's going to have a nice, nice polished finish to it. It's going to have the white keyboard, and it's going to have the Raspberry Pi in there with all these cables to make it connect to the outside world via the back. And in this, the, the set, this set of videos is I'm going to document how to build one of these. I've seen videos out there where people have built them and then they try and explain how they built them and but no one's actually done a set of videos of the step-by-step -step, um, process they went through to do this so 
I know that there's plenty of uh, Raspberry 64 Raspberry Pis, but using the 64C shape. So I thought I would use the bread bin. And apparently you can do it using the bread bin. And so that's what I'll be doing. So this is the first video, so the introduction to the video of and all the all the um, technology and attachments I've had to buy to make this a success and to make it look like that the 64 is a 64 it'll just have some extra sockets at the back and that's what I wanted to be able to have an all-in-one so we plug the power in we plug the TV lead in plug a, a, uh, a controller in and then play retro games or to run the C64 emulator inside on a Raspberry Pi and have the ability, you know, have the extra functionality that the emulator will do, like warp mode and stuff like that, so you can warp through loading games and, and bits and pieces and like that. So that's the, uh, that's my summer project for this year. And now the weather's getting good. I'm going to take that to my friends who, friend who will uh, then paint it for me and I will then have another set of videos so of the step-by-step -step things that I did to make this work so the next video will probably be about when I'm soldering the header to the um, USB keyboard adapter and also the USB header which I still haven't found wherever that went Oh, it's somewhere in here. Just gotta find it. Unless it's in the other box up there. But I'll find it and uh, we'll see. There you go. One USB header. I know it's in the box. So that's gonna connect to and it's that this is what's going to power and read the keyboard through the USB adapter so that's good so that end will connect to the header pins that will that I'm going to solder on and that end will go into the Raspberry Pi so as you can see it's going to be an interesting little project and and I thought it would be a good way of sharing it with you because I'm I'm a I'm a retro uh, developer I've developed all my life and I wanted to make an old machine have a modern twist and with the Raspberry Pi 3 and to uh, well make it a little bit more playful and that's what the Raspberry Pi will allow us to do and as long as I've got the full connectivity there it should be quite an interesting project so with that I will see you in the next video in this series of the Commodore 64 Pi. See you next time. Take care. Bye.